One thing that it's really easy to miss is that to think of language primarily as writing is something that only came along very late in the human story. If the human species is 150,000 years old, we've been speaking for 150,000 years, or some people would say about 80,000, some 50, but a good long time. In terms of writing, that's only been for about the past 5,500 years, and of course in the beginning writing was a highly elite activity, only available to a few. The ordinary person didn't do it. In terms of widespread literacy, we're really only talking in most societies about a few centuries. And so what that means is that we have this artificial condition where we think of writing as we think of language as something that's on the page and what comes very quickly after language is on the page is a sense that there's a way that it's supposed to be because on the page it's frozen and it stays the way it is it's the nature of human speech to change as years go by but what's on the page stays the same a natural illusion emerges that what's on the page is the way language should be, whereas what's happening in speech is a departure from that should. That's not something that anybody would think if their language were only spoken, and they don't. But once it's written, that happens. And that means that from then on, what diverges from that thing that was put on the page at a certain point naturally becomes perceived as a divergence, as an excrescence, as a devolution, as wrong. And that will never change. Now, now, many people would also say that what's perceived as wrong is that which is spoken by the oppressed, by people who don't have power. I would say that it's actually simpler than that. People who are oppressed and who don't have power are almost certainly the ones who don't have as much access to the page, to being educated into what's on the page, and therefore whatever they speak inevitably is going to be one more of these departures from the page. Automatically, the way they talk, the way they express themselves, therefore is not the standard because they weren't exposed to it. And so, that's always going to be there. I can't even claim to be completely immune from it myself. To be a linguist is to be given a, an almost hermetic kind of training in hearing and seeing vernacular language as equal to standard language. And I very much do, but it took training, and I can't say that there aren't some things that I hear people say where I just think aesthetically that doesn't work for me, and I certainly can't claim that I don't hear some ways of speaking as less classy. That's just part of being human, because we've got this standardization and we've got the page. But I think that all of us could be a little bit more hermetic in thinking of it as we've got this standard and we've got this page, then speech moves away from it. And even though what's moved away from the page will never be what you pop out at an elegant cocktail party or when you're making a highly stringent kind of speech, although more and more people use colloquial language in those settings all the time, but there'll always be a certain space for highly formal language. Nevertheless, we don't have to see that which is not on the page as wrong. It's just different because that's how language works, but it's not wrong. But we will always see it as a matter of some language is more appropriate in some contexts than others. But there's a difference between that and thinking some language is a mistake while other language is correct.